Hey guys, so I'm going to analyze one very example, one good example of a YouTuber saying something to sell a product to a subscriber, subscriber base where they know the product is actually not going to hold its value. Now this happens to a lot of, a lot of people do this. And sometimes it's not as clean cut as a card, but in this example, we have a certain card, Creeping Tar Pit, and it was being promoted by the Mana Source as a good buy. You should pick them up right now from TCG Player, so we know who the advertisement is targeting. Uh, there is an action item, and in one case, at least, it looks like a guy actually listened to Weds and purchased the Creeping Tar Pits for $20 each. Most times when advertising is done, it's not as obvious or it's more, it's hidden. The exact benefits of it um, have to be, it's harder to figure out. But here, TCG Player makes a commission on whatever card is sold. So if a card is sold at $15 versus if the card is sold at $7, the commission is more than two times as much at the 15 price point. So in this case, TCG player does directly benefit from Wedge saying to buy Creeping Tar Pit at 15, even though we all know it will eventually hit seven for the regular version, which is not selling as much and it is currently under $4 shipped for the Ultimate Masters version. Again, many times when we do Magic Gathering, it's not as clean or as clear as this example. I'm really glad that we can look at this and say that, yes, uh, this is what happens when you sell out and you need money. You do tell your subscribers to do bad things. Pico Trade, for all of the I told you so's, the one argument is they didn't know. They didn't know. They didn't understand uh, the pyramid scheme. They didn't get that the Pico Point wouldn't always be 100 points like Eric Freytag, the inventor, said it would be. They got confused. That might be a good excuse for the majority of their subscriber base and they might forgive them even if they did pico trade but this is even more clean cut this is the best example i have of a youtuber who sold their subscribers a product to benefit their pocket line if you will or to benefit their sponsor which is tcg player because tcg player makes more money at 15 than they do at seven by telling their subscribers to do something that they know they should not, they themselves would never do, which is buying Creeping Tar Pit at a price right after people knew it would be reprinted. And now that it has been reprinted, I think that we're gonna see it the low price of $7. I'm happy making the video at this price point. It might go even lower. The $7 is for the original and does include shipping. So why does this happen? Um, it happens because people make money from you guys. It's very simple. Uh, sometimes they sell you a box for $80 and they sell your subscription fee. Uh, that makes a little bit more sense because it's less deceptive. Um, it's more like a Costco method and you do get a booster box after you pay your money. Sometimes people sell you a dream, a hope. Uh, the hope of Puka was very simple. It was that you could trade your bulk cards you don't need for a force of will or a dual land. That was the hope. Uh, it turned out that hope was a scam, but I've already said that many times. Or a monthly magic box. Sometimes products appeal to casual players and the value, people want, the, the, there is a value proposition so the monthly magic box supposedly, according to some YouTubers, had 60 to $80 of value every month that you were only paying $20 for. That was a value proposition that was later turned out to be a scam because not, assuming that if it was even worth $20 to begin with, it was not being sent to those people. It was only being sent to YouTubers who gave it raving reviews. Here, 
is a very clean cut example of a card that everyone and their mother should know would not go up in price. And yet we have a YouTuber on a video about MTG Finance and actually focusing on cheaper card prices due to reprints. A, not mentioned this is going to be reprinted, although he knows because it's a box topper. It's one of the first cards that was revealed or spoiled. And B, still made the video. There is no way in editing Wedge watches this $15 mark and no and, and has any hope that somebody buying this at 15 that was a good buy for them. There's no way. There's no gray area. There's no, I don't understand economics. I don't understand Pico trade. Um, there's no tuition should be free. Pay my student tuition. I don't understand money. I don't understand healthcare. There's no gray area. There's a lot of gray area even in the GoFundMe. You might say, oh, well, he really did pay that much money. You know, it's hard to argue because um, there's not a exact number. So numbers don't lie. Follow the money and money doesn't lie. Those are the two things that are true in life is emotions and feelings and donations and uh, begging for money. That might You might give money if someone begs for it because you feel bad, but does that person really need money? Does that, is that person actually a millionaire pretending to be homeless? Maybe they make $100,000 from YouTube. Who knows? But at the end of the day, um, that's really hard to prove someone's income without their tax document. Here, I can directly say that this card right now is, I mean, $4 shipped for the non-original version and 7 shipped for the original version. There's no one, I think, in MTD Finance that would have made this call. Now, in the alternate universe, I couldn't even see this card. How would Creeping Tar Pit go up in price after it's been reprinted as a rare? And why would you tell people to buy at 15? If you really cared about, you know, like he makes statements of, oh, I hope that I'm able to bring value to your collection. I'm making these finance videos so you guys can pick up cards now cheaply and you can retain value. But all of that is kind of put to, maybe he it is true, but you have to question the legitimacy of this particular one and what that means for the rest of them. So I've seen a very strong interest in the mana source of making MTG finance videos. And in these finance videos, obviously, he uses TCG player prices um, to kind of get people to say, oh, is this a good deal? Or is this a good deal? $15 is a good deal. And a lot of people will listen to him. A lot of casual players who don't understand. Um, I don't know, like, if don't understand is maybe they ignore the bright flashing lights that reprint, reprint. And they go on and continue to buy these cards, although it is very sad. I think it is quite sad, actually. Um, no one should ever make... At some point in time, Pico's Trade was a scam. And they all realized that. Uh, what happened with the monthly Magic Box was very early on, subscribers told Tolarian and told Weds, and they told... Um, the Facebook group, all the YouTubers on their Facebook group, that they were getting comments from people who didn't receive boxes and their subscribers were worried and they were being double charged, sometimes triple charged. And they would post these things to our Facebook chat and then I made a video about that and that upset them. It really upset them. And I said, why? Why should that upset you? You should address the issue now why would you wait all this time and continue to pump up videos promoting the monthly magic box, although you know and I know that it is a scam? It's image. Uh, and it's the same reason they're going to say buy Creeping Tar Pit at $15. It's because they really believe their subscribers are A, dumb enough to do so, and B, they want them to do so. Otherwise, why have this screenshot and why have a promotion for this? You could pick any card you want, any card you want, and it would have been better than this one. 
I mean, literally any card you could promote it would have been better than this one because very few cards can tank value from fifteen dollars to seven original and fifteen to four are free um, over a few weeks. That's exceptional tanking value. Like you, if you were to pick a card that would you know drop the most amount of money, it would be probably one of these man lands because a they're rare and b they're your man lands, so there would be many of them. So, yeah, I mean. This is this video on November 6th. It's been a month, almost exactly as of my recording this video. And I've been waiting and waiting, and there's no clearer example than this. Uh, Pico Trade, Monthly Magic Box, you've heard me say it many times, but still, some of you don't believe it. But believe this, this is clean cut. A card for $15, if you listen to him, a month later is worth seven. Near mint, still near mint. Why would anyone tell you to buy this card when they know that it will go down in price? And it has gone down in price. So obviously I couldn't make this type of video unless I saw the recent price. I do feel like it will go down a little bit more. The Eternal Masters one will probably, it's already under $3 and, but then shipping and stuff. But I feel like it will climb down and down and down because there's just so much of this being open right now. But this shows you the danger of listening to YouTubers. Now, if you buy a product from a YouTuber, check the price. Is it the lowest price? If you're okay with giving a YouTuber money and that's your rational decision, then do it. But if you're buying this card because a financial expert, junior cheeseburger expert is telling you that this is a good buy, that's kind of deceptive. Um, that's very deceptive for somebody to make a video. Like talking about how the man lands are going to come down in price with the upcoming reprints right into buying creeping tar pitch right now. You guys better go buy them up like Wedge says so you can get host after Ma Ultimate Masters drops. Way to go, Wedge. And so this gets free likes. Wedge posted a picture of a cheeseburger. I'll get like a thousand likes on Twitter, right? So there's kind of this disconnect between his subscriber base and what they are being subjugated to. I know out of Wedge's subscribers, 5,000 of them, because he had a homepage thanking all 5,000 plus of them, signed up for Pico Trade. I wonder how many of them are too embarrassed or ashamed to say that they are signed up for Pico Trade because of Wedge. Uh, it's the same with the Bernie Mad Madoff. A lot of these supposedly very smart investors didn't initially come out and say they've been cheated because they were too embarrassed. Um, if you are a wolf of Wall Street and you invest in Bernie Madoff because everyone you knew did and you thought it was smart, well, you look like an idiot now, right? You just fed into the largest Ponzi scheme in the US or ever. So who's going to put money with you again, wolf of Wall Street? And that's what's going on with these YouTube celebrities where... Um, I think people are just too embarrassed to say that they've been scammed. And I view this, I mean, when something is $15 and you tell someone to buy it and you know that money's being made by your sponsor, after more money's being made at 15 than seven, man, that's, that's a terrible way to do it. That's, I mean, you have to hold yourself to a higher standard. Anyway, bye guys.